Next one is uh, Mr. Sirwa for the RCDA. The Russo-Canadian Democratic Alliance, uh, Mr. Blair. Thank you. Yes, Madam Commissar. You'll probably be happy to learn that I won't be asking any questions about a warrant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind, sir. But <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Um, I, during your testimony before this commission, you testified uh, in the spring, you testified that you did not see any evidence of Russian interference uh, directed at the outcome of the 2019 and 2021 general elections. Do you rem remember that? Yes, sir. Um, but you also mentioned that the Russians were influencing other types of public opinion uh, during both elections, although it was not directed at the outcome of the elections. Do you re remember that? Yes, sir. Um, we didn't, didn't have time to finish that conversation last time because we have a, a, a very limited time, but I want to give you an opportunity to explain what types of uh, public opinion the Russians were influencing during both elections, if you remember. Yeah, we, we have seen evidence uh, in, in that election and subsequently in political interference, the hostile activity of a number of different countries, including Russia, uh, which is intended, you know, the different countries have different approaches to influence and, and interference. Um, but what we, we were seeing rather predominantly at that time from uh, Russia was misinformation and disinformation, which I, I believe had was intended to have the effect of causing um, undermining public confidence in important public institutions and inciting um, dissent uh, more broadly. Um, and it, it, that in and of itself could be challenging. What I did not have evidence of and did not witness during that particular election was overt efforts of that country to, uh, to interfere with the election its, itself, but rather with Canadian society and, and Canadian perceptions of elections, et cetera. So, so we've seen pretty, pretty like clear attempts to interfere with elections during the 2016 U.S. presidential election and the 2017 uh, French presidential election as well. Um, so do I understand from your testimony that we didn't see that in Canada and that's kind of... And, and, and to be clear... I, I was not presented with evidence of that. There was, I think, a, a necessary and appropriate focus among our national security intelligence agencies on a number of concerning activities that were overt, covert, um, and represented a significant national security risk to important public institutions like our electoral system um, that, that were deeply concerning and which we have testified to. But I did not, I was not presented with evidence specifically yeah. of Russia engaging in that activity, save and except for what I've already described. All right. I appreciate that. And if I know there was no, like, massive, massive hack and steal attempts from Russia and, and the subsequent disinformation like we've seen in the U.S. and in, French, in France, um, I'm wondering if, if it's only theoretical to think that certain political parties may use this dissent that is amplified by Russia for their own political gains during an election, for instance. And, and again, I, I think you're, you're asking me to opine on something that I really don't feel qualified okay. to, to offer. That's fair. Um, I, I have not, I'm not in receipt of information intelligence that I could rely on to form that belief. Um, and again, I'm, I am well aware of the That's hostile right. activities that certain Certain foreign actors engage in, 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 in undermining our institutions and, and attempting to interfere with important aspects of our society and, and, and those institutions. But with respect to the motivation of, of others, not the, the, those hostile states, but others, I, I, I don't feel comfortable and confident to be able to offer an opinion. No, that's totally fair, and I appreciate your answers. Um, I'll move to a different topic now, not, not one that cons concerns um, your current functions as Minister of National Defense. Um, I'll be blunt. Uh, would you agree that Russia is engaged in a hybrid war um, with the West, including Canada, at the moment? Uh, in what kind of war, sir? Hybrid warfare, uh, one that is short of like actual military confrontation with kinetic confrontation, but um, 
everything that's, that is short of that, including disinformation and interference with elections. We also, if, if I may, there's, there's also a number of non-kinetic hostile activities that Russia is clearly engaged in, including uh, cyber attacks, and even some criminal and some obviously politically motivated cyber attacks on our critical infrastructure, our, our data, our information systems. Um, as I've already alluded to, they are engaged in a number of misinformation and disinformation activities. I, I think the, the motive that is apparent uh, from Russia is, is to disrupt and cause chaos and social division within the country. There are other approaches by other hostile nations uh, that are a little bit more long-term and, and perhaps a little bit more strategic, but that's my observation for uh, the concerns we have. Some of it is kinetic, and, and so we're seeing also activities from certain countries, including Russia, um, much related to the, the, the current war in Ukraine. Uh, but also issues of concern with respect to Canada's high north in the Arctic. Uh, would, it, would it be fair to say, I, I know this you mentioned the Arctic, it's a very interesting topic as well. Would it be fair to say that uh, Russia sees itself in a war with the West, including Canada? Not a declared war. I think we very clearly, and, and I am very comfortable saying that they engage in what we have termed as hostile activities of a state actor that is directed towards the West generally and includes Canada. Okay. And um, I'm wondering if you if we could put up, pull up RCD 88 at um, page 25, but first I'll, sh I'll present to you the document. Um, because we've, we've heard from some witnesses that Russia is engaged in a cognitive warfare, hybrid war, warfare, cognitive combat, information warfare. So there, there are a lot of, of words being thrown around. And I, I understand your testimony. Oh, please, please, can we stay at the first page for now? I'll present the document to the witnesses. Um, yes, so there's a lot of terminal, terminology being floated around. And I'm not sure that's a proper forum to have that debate. But I'm wondering if we have any um, we can discuss about um, what follows from, from this situation. Um, what kind of recommendations would you have to better counter Russia's aggressive behavior towards Canada, including our, and especially our democratic institutions, uh, which is the focus of this commission? Um, so this is an article from uh, uh, edited, uh, a monography edited by Bradley Bauman uh, titled Connective Combat, China, Russia, and Iran's Information War Against Americans, published on June 2024. Um, we can go now to page 20, 25. Please. Would, would information war be an appropriate term, uh, Minister Blair? I, can, can I just suggest, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very reluctant here testifying under oath to comment on a newspaper article I have not yet read. Oh, okay. And, it's, it's, and, it's, and, and quite frankly, I don't know anything about the basis, the evidentiary basis for what is written here. No. And, and so I, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable the idea of, of commenting on newspaper articles, for example. Oh yeah, I, just just for the record, it is not a newspaper article. It is an academic article published by uh, academics and postdoctoral fellows. But um, in any event, I'm um, I, I'll try to move on just to from the idea of, of the terminology because that's not the main issue here. Um, there are some recommendations in this article, and I want to have your opinion how to counteract a better contract. Um, Russia's hostile activities in Canada directed our, at our democratic institutions, which again is the focus of this commission of inquiry. Um, one of the recommendations, well, there are three recommendations here, but globally, generally, they say that it is time to take the fight to Moscow in their information domain. That will, that, that will require countering both Russia's information technical and information psychological effort, efforts. The following recommendations can, can help Washington proactively counter Russian disinformation and reach key audiences within Russia and elsewhere. So if it may help you be more comfortable, I asked a similar question to Melanie Jolie yesterday, and she essentially agreed that um, sharing more information, more truthful information with Russia, with Russians abroad and with the Global South were um, recommendations that she's already implementing, in fact, that she's already having interviews with um, radios across Europe to promote uh, the democracy and, and the ideals. But I want to know from a, 
a national defense perspective, is it something that uh, you'd agree is, is, is a recommendation that we, Canada should implement? Well, first of all, let me strongly agree that I think one of the best antidotes for, to misinformation and disinformation is the truth. And so I think it's very important that we should always tell the truth. I think there are also, because the media of this misinformation and disinformation is often online. And so some of the legislative reforms that our government has introduced with respect to dealing with online harms is also an, an appropriate response to, to, to that threat. And what's your, your department's role, Department of National Defense role in doing that? Yeah, the, the Department of National Defense, our, our primary function is deterrence and, and to protect the national interest and the national security. We work, it, national defense and national security are very closely aligned and they're all within the umbrella of Canada's foreign policy. And, and so it, I think it's a whole of government response and, and I think that's what Mr. Jolie would have also have indicated to, to, to this panel. There are a number of things that we can and are doing in response. Uh, quite frankly, it would not be in the national interest to discuss that too openly here. All right, I appreciate your answers. Thank you.